Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're checking out this Intel Hades Canyon NUC. And this one's coming with the i7-8809G CPU, and of course the Radeon RX Vega graphics. So let's jump right into it then, and talk about the specs of it. We'll start with that CPU. So it is a quad core with hyperthreading, so four cores, eight threads. It's a KB Lake G CPU with a 4.2 gigahertz single core turbo, 3.9 gigahertz all core turbo, and a 3.1 gigahertz base clock. Now it's also coming with the Radeon RX Vega MGH graphics with 24 compute units and four gigabytes of HBM2 memory. 1,063 megahertz base clock and 1,190 megahertz boost clock. Memory is at 800 megahertz. So it's quite impressive in the specs department. And we'll get to performance very soon. But first, let's explain what this is. So it's a compact PC and it comes as bare bones. And if you don't know what that means, it means that you have to supply your own memory and your own storage. So you have to open it up, you just pop the top off, it's very easy. And uh, you can put in your memory. I just put in an 8 gigabyte dual channel kit, DDR4, 2133 megahertz. Has to be DDR4. You'll also see it has two M.2 slots. So I just put in a 128 gigabyte Intel uh, M.2 SSD there. But you could put another one in if you wanted to also. Now it does have a phaser mount as well, which means you could mount it on the back of a TV or your monitor or something if you wanted to do that. Uh, that's always handy. A lot of people like that, especially if you're going to be using this guy as sort of like a media PC or something like that. Media sort of, you know, device for playing stuff on your TV. It would be pretty overpowered for it though, and you could probably get away with something a lot less powerful than this guy. But hey, maybe you want to make a game on it as well. Now, as far as the dimensions go, it comes in at 22 centimeters wide, 14 centimeters from front to back, and it's about 4 centimeters thick. So it's not very big at all, as you can see, you know, this this is going to be fine. If you're going to use this as your desktop PC, it's going to take up no room at all on your desk, and that's always a good thing. Now, the power supply <laughs> that it comes with is enormous. It's, of course, you know, it's an external power supply, but it's almost as big as the NUC itself, which was quite incredible to see. And as far as I.O. Guys, I .O. goes, uh, let's start with the front then. So, of course, you have your power button here. That's an infrared receiver up there, USD card slot. Then it comes with a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A port, a USB 3.0 charger port, HDMI 2.0 port, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C port, and a combo audio jack. And if we spin it around and have a look at the back here, uh, going from left to right, we have just a combo, another sort of combo audio 3.5 millimeter jack there, uh, your power in or AC in, two Thunderbolt Type 3 ports, twin mini display ports, two RJ45 Ethernet ports, then it looks like four USB 3.0 ports, and then you get another HDMI 2.0 port there. It also has a cool looking skull on the top as well, and you can customize it to make that, you know, change the colors around if you wanted to. It does look cool and it does liven it up a bit. But that's enough talking about all that sort of thing. You guys want to know about the performance. So let's start with Cinebench then, get an idea of how good the CPU is. So as you guys can see, single thread performance there, fairly solid. Uh, the multi-thread performance is also pretty decent. But let's jump into a game. So Counter-Strike Global Offensive is a pretty low requirement game. You see how Ultra 1080p, it's just fine. Very, very high numbers. And even when we go up to 1440p on Ultra, it's still very good. So games like that, this is going to power through, no worries at all. Heading over to PUBG. Uh, you see, even at high on 1080, it's struggling a little bit. I mean, we almost got there with the average, and we drop it down to medium, it's not much better. I don't think it's really the NUX fault, it's more PUBG's fault, because it's still quite a mess. Now, heading over to F1 2017, we see once again, Ultra 1080, it's just barely getting to 60. Not really where you'd want it to be. When you drop it down to high, that looks a lot better though. 104 FPS on the average, and the 1% is still a little bit low, but that's fine. And then Rainbow Six Siege. This is sort of like a medium requirement game. We see on uh, very high, it's quite solid there, no issues at all. And even going up to 1440p, that's very playable on very high. So as far as the performance goes out of the NUC, it's very good. A lot of people have been telling me to check this out for quite a while because it's so good. And I am very impressed with it. 
if you're someone that's only going to be playing like low to medium requirement games that's all you're doing then something like this would be perfect but if you're wanting to play like those triple a titles with the crazy graphics and wanting to like max them out on ultra then yeah it's probably not going to have the power you desire but for everything else it's going to be just fine but what about the temps and the noise so temps wise uh, it was it did decent Whenever you have these sort of like compact PCs, that's always the main thing I look for is how hot it gets because oftentimes these things get seriously hot. And this did and it didn't. So to test the CPU, I did a handbrake render test. That's going to really stress it out. And you can see it went up to 85 degrees Celsius. That's hot, but that's also a sort of like not unrealistic scenario because plenty of people render videos. But... Uh, for your average person it's not going to happen very often and if all you're doing is gaming then you'll never probably see the CPU go that high when I was testing this and doing the gaming it was hovering depending on what sort of game I was playing and how much the CPU was being used it would be in the 70s maybe it would creep into the 80s but for the most part it was pretty good and the GPU is just fine there was no issues there I ran the Unigen Heaven benchmark and as you guys can see there's no issues there as far as the temps now as far as noise goes it was also pretty good uh, when you're doing casual things browsing the web all that type of stuff it's pretty much silent you're not gonna hear it when you start gaming it does ramp up a little bit but it's easily you, if you're wearing headphones you're not gonna hear it if you have good speakers and you turn them up you're also not gonna hear it so uh, that's not going to be a problem at all. But as always, I'll let you guys judge for yourself. So first I'll show you what it sounds like, you know, just browsing the web, doing something like that, and then I'll show you what it sounds like in a game. So that should give you an idea there. As I said, it's just fine, and I don't really think it would be an issue at all. Which brings us to the conclusion then, and what do I make of this Intel Hades Canyon NUC? So right now at playtech.co.nz, you can pick this guy up on special for $1,599 New Zealand dollars, which is still quite expensive, and when you factor in that you've got to, you know, provide the memory as well, and the storage, if you're buying decent stuff, that'll easily go up to about two grand. So 2000 New Zealand dollars, and that's with it on special right now. It's a lot of money, and when I look overseas, it's also quite expensive in other countries too. So I would put it this way. Is it good value for money? No. It just simply isn't, and there's no way you can really say that it is. I know people will say, well, Kevin, you know, it's so small. That's what you're paying for, and I understand it. And for that, it is very good you're paying extra money to get something that's much more compact I really do understand it but when I start thinking like how what sort of gaming laptop you could get for that amount of money uh, especially once you add in the memory and stuff what sort of normal PC you could build you know you could build like a micro ATX PC and it would be much more powerful and better value for money and it still wouldn't be that as huge of course it wouldn't be as compact as this but it would be you know on the right path it's really just going to depend. If you're someone that the size matters, size above all else, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, not the way I wanted. You guys know what I mean. If that's the biggest thing you're looking for, if that's the main thing you're looking for, I'll put it that way, then sure, I mean, spend the extra money, you're going to get this very compact PC. But if you're someone like me that doesn't mind having you know something that takes up extra room or something you'd be much better off just building a normal pc because you'll get one that's much more powerful for the same amount of money much better value and if you're someone that's looking for something that's mobile as well you just get a gaming laptop because of course you've got to have all your peripherals with this guy as well so it's not going to be ideal to take around with you for most people anyway where a gaming laptop of course it you know comes with everything so you can take it to uni you take it to work whatever and it's not a big hassle so that's basically how i would put it but I want to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comment section down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Would you buy something like this NUC? Is it something that you would be interested in? I'd really like to know because I don't really know the market particularly for this guy. I'm sure there is one or else Intel wouldn't have released it. Uh, and it is impressive, but 
I'm not really sure because I've never met anyone that runs one of these. Maybe you do, or maybe you know someone that does. So let me know what was their reason or what your reason was for buying it. I'd really like to know. Now I thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you all next time.